Seated. Let's get this thing going. I have some good news for you tonight. Mike Jackson said that he did not need to come up and speak. See, I told you. However, as you all know, Mike Jackson is the king of the emails. We got 200 people, and he needs 24 of you. So email Jackson, let him know that you can work for him, and let's get these covered. We have Weimer this Thursday in Weimer. We need eight officials. Now, you remember we mentioned that we had drafted a letter asking for cooperation with the ADs and the superintendents to help us help them. So we've got schools that have moved their middle school games from Tuesday to Thursday. That letter worked a charm, didn't it? But help slant out, okay? JC, do you have anything tonight, sir? No, I'll let it go. You'll let it go. John Carter said, let it go. Wayno, nothing? Okay. Now, just so you know, Bill Holland has put together a list of all the positive point districts and the point totals. He is going to email that to Arnold. And you know how much Arnold loves email. All you referees, look for an email from Arnold and it'll list all the schools that we work with positive points in that district. It'll be under documents, you know, ref town, other documents. Look for it. Okay. Who is our guest speaker tonight? Is he not here? Make a motion. <laughs> Uh, file report forms for the referees, video cards, game cards. Are you our presenter? She said somebody else, not Dre. All right, cool. All right. Well, they're set up. Dre. Hello, gentlemen. My name is Dre Lord, if you don't know me. I've been uh, in the Austin chapter for 18 years. Um... I, I love I love this game, <laughs> and I'm so excited to be able to talk. Uh, and one of the main reasons is I actually get to thank a few people that have kind of helped me get here. And since I had the microphone and the stage, probably be the only time I ever do this. So um, there's like four people. There's many many people that have like really helped me get here. You know, 18 years. Uh, he's he's not one of them actually. <laughs> uh, so uh, so I like to thank um, the, the first person that kind of really helped me out was uh, was actually Bill Holland. He was the first person that got me like on a varsity crew. Um, everybody else in that crew had like 20 plus years of experience, and I had like five. And he brought me on and kind of taught me a lot and uh, let me mess up a bunch, which is really nice when you have all these guys going, "Hey, Dre, that's nice, but don't ever do that again," you know. So um, if you have a mentor like that that kind of helps you out, that's always a great uh, great thing. Um, Secondly, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Doc Barrett. Um, he's, he's my current crew chief, and uh, what, he's, what he means to the chapter is uh, huge. You know, he comes up here every, every week, right, and he sacrifices his time. He does Rules Plus, and he's a true, he always says it, he's a, he's a chapter guy. He really wants to give back. He really loves this game so much. And uh, so I'd like, I'd like to um, thank you very much for everything you've done with me. And then, uh, and then two other people, I don't, I don't see them here. Um, but I'd like to thank uh, uh, Marvell. Um, that, that guy is also kind of the same. He really sacrifices a lot. If I ask people to raise their hand and say, hey, uh, what has Marvell done for me? Has he helped me advance? Has he made me a better official? Has he brought me closer to my goals? I, I bet a lot of us would actually raise our hands and say, yes, he has. And, um, and then the last person would be uh, Matt Jones. Uh, personally, uh, I know he's done a lot for chapter. He trains a lot of people. And uh, for me, he's like, every time I have a rules question, he's there to help me. If I need a referral for someone to talk to, Matt's there for me. 
Um, so those four people specifically, again, there's a lot of people that helped me out. Um, so I'm not trying to leave anybody out, but, but those four people have helped me. And, uh, and so um, let's uh, start the presentation. All right, this is uh, blocks in the back. There is our signal right there, IBB, and a signal 43, like that. A lot of us, uh, I do this a lot. Every time I got a block in the back, I always want to go with two hands, because that feels like what we're going to do, because that's really what it looks like, but that's not it. So there is the definition in rule two. Um, a block in the back, it's back. It, is contact against an opponent occurring when the force of the initial contact is from behind and above the waist. Uh, when in question, the contact is at or below the waist, which is clipping. And then the, I like to highlight uh, the position of the blocker's head or feet that does not necessarily indicate the point of initial contact. So just don't, we don't want to simplify things so much. You know, we, we do rules and everything looks beautiful, black and white, right? And then we start talking exceptions, philosophies, and how things we've seen before. And so we don't want to just simplify things and saying, well, his head was here or here. And actually, it's actually laid out in the rule for us. There's uh, the actual rule in the rule nine. So a block in the back other than against the ball carrier is illegal. And again, what do we care about here? We have all these exceptions. So let's uh, talk about those real quick. So offensive players who are on the line of scrimmage at the snap within the blocking zone. So they can all shove the heck out of each other in the back, right? That's all fine, fine and dandy. Um, but they can't do it, and there's our exception to the exception, right? So this is why they pay you all the big bucks, is so that we can talk about rules and say, hey, coach, that's the exception to the exception. But if you can't do it once it's left the blocking zone, you can't return and block in the back. Or when the blocking zone disintegrates when the ball leaves. So what is this similar to? Block below the waist, yeah. So those are, those are similar. So when a player turns his back to a potential blocker, you know, if, if I had a 300 pound guy coming at me, I'd probably like cower down a little bit. And so if he nails me in the back, that's, that's on me. So don't, um, that's, that is not a block in the back. So when you're trying to reach a runner um, to recover a fumble, a backward pass or a kick or touch forward pass. So you see that like during a loose ball and you'll see someone shoved in the back and kind of knock them to the ground. That's, that's not a block in the back. Um, also, if it's a tip pass and the ball goes up in the air, you'll see people shoving each other then. Uh, don't, don't call a block in the back in those instances either. So this one says when the opponent, last one, similar here, says that when the opponent turns his back to the blocker, so that, that rule is actually describing a block, so um, like how to block with your hands, and it has to be inside the frame. So if you're on someone's back, it's outside the frame, but again, that's because they, in this instance, they've actually uh, turned their back to you. And then the last one says when an eligible player behind the neutral zone pushes an opponent in the back above the waist to get to a forward pass. And that's probably going to be on like my tip too, but this is behind the neutral zone. So these are uh, the it's a 10-yard penalty. It is a previous spot foul behind the neutral zone, or it's a spot foul otherwise. And then of course, if it's in the uh, end zone or uh, teammates end zone, it's a uh, it's a safety. Now, so we got the exceptions, right? We got black and white rules. We got the exceptions. Now let's talk a little philosophies. And this is more, um, I'm on a five-man crew, right? So um, there's maybe a little differences for you college guys or whatever, but I would say, you know, 80% of our chapter does mostly five-man football, right? So I'm going to speak from that line. And also, even though sub-varsity, we kind of joke about it, kind of doesn't matter, <laughs> but it does matter a lot to the coaches and the kids. So we're going to kind of talk about philosophies. And a lot of this is like, Maybe about four or five years ago, uh, Marvell said, hey, if you're pushing someone in the back and you don't hit them between the one and the one, it's not a block in the back. And, and we, we kind of laughed about that. We're like, oh, come on. You know, that's, that's really extreme. 
But then I started watching film, and I'm going to out myself, you know, and I kind of think I know why he picked me to do this uh, presentation. Uh, I thought it was a joke when he actually asked me to do it because I'm like, oh, God, I've gotten probably, probably half of those wrong or 75% of them or whatever, But because uh, it's, it's a really tough call to make because you'll feel like it looks like a block in the back, um, but really, and I think that's why he told us, like, to keep it safe, it almost almost has to be, like, between the ones. Now, we are going to talk about like, when it may not be that. So philosophy-wise, let's, let's just talk a little bit about this. So no call is better than incorrect call. Just, and that kind of applies to almost any officiating call we make, right? If you don't know for sure, it's better to get the no call against you. And I know we don't all get graded like that in, a, in a, with our five-man in, in high school, but that's just a good philosophy to start with. Let's go. If you don't know for sure, just don't do it and get dinged otherwise. If you have two players run side by side, you're, you're just not going to have um, illegal block in the back. So it may look, you know, someone can give you a shove from the side, but if they're, if they're right next to each other, don't call that. If a player lands on his face, now this is a good one. We like to use that axiom, right? Hey, the head was on this side. It was on this side. And now we got hey, the player landed right on his face, it has to be a block in the back, right? Um, make sure you see that whole play, because these kids are way more athletic than any of y'all, I guarantee it. And so they get hit, they can twist their bodies in so many, you know, I mean, maybe y'all remember when you were that young. I, it's been a long time for me, so I don't really remember anymore. Um, I'm just happy to run down the field and not pull anything, you know, I'm at that stage, so. Uh, but you can land in so many ways that uh, just seeing him land on his face, don't, don't assume that. Make sure you saw the whole play. And if you didn't see it and he landed on his face, go with the no call. And if anybody wants to dispute anything, just raise it up. So we're, again, we're talking philosophies and generalities. This is the kind of the exception to the exception on philosophies. If a player is in chase mode, so that's the where a, um, you know, it happens a lot on the pump plays. You have a, a, a gunner going down, and you have someone chasing him because the, the, the blocker got beat, and so he's actually chasing behind him. These are, the chase mode is kind of a little bit of an exception of these. If you have someone in chase mode, then that's the guy that has, you know, the quote, unquote, like brick in his hand. That's the guy you want to watch. And so he, not necessarily, if you're in chase mode, does he always have to have his hands on the one and the one? Because his force will be from behind, and it will prevent the uh, player from making the tackle. So that's what we want to watch. If it's not in chase mode, then all these other ones really do apply. But if he's in chase mode, just keep your eye on that guy. Make sure that he's actually doing, um, make sure that the force, if he's in chase mode, is enough to the side, so like here, 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 that it's not uh, preventing him from making that tackle. So hand on back with hand on shoulder. So that has, which one? Here, here, right? You know, let's turn you sideways. If he's that, that's, that's not blocking the back, right? And again, if it's in chase mode, though, if it's in chase mode, that's, we're going to look at that a little bit differently because he's going to be running behind him, and if he does that, because they're running full speed. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. The push in the back after hands contact in any other part of the body is not blocking the back. So you started one wear, and that was kind of like in the rules, and you ended up in the back. So once you've contacted a part of the body and it ends up on the back, we're not going to call a block in the back. This one kind of gets me a lot here. Um, player dives in front of the player. So you'll see right there, they're kind of like running side by side, and then they dive right in front trying to get a tackle, and you kind of fall over the player. You'll see that called a lot as a block in the back. Um, you know, the, the player had no positioning, he had no, he had really had no advantage, and he just dove. He really probably, odds are, wasn't even gonna make that tackle at all. And then it just looks like crap on film. <laughs> but it's not really, I would say, a block in the back. And this one here, Blair, players blocked, and this is a philosophy again, blocked immediately into making the tackle is also not a block in the back. So if you get him, see him get shoved, 
we'll see, actually going to see a, a, a film here in a second that kind of talks about um, the grader and the supervisor talk about getting blocked into that, into that player. And it's kind of like a lot of us will, uh, won't call holding right if that player makes the tackle. It's kind of similar. And then the last part here says contact should have full force from behind. We want to see the total force from behind to have that um, block in the back. Anybody have any questions on these? Okay. So here's the approved rulings. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm not going to read them all off. I just want to talk about a couple. Cheat, get my cheat notes here. Seven or nine. Because everybody can read their own approved rulings if they wanted to. The, uh, let's talk about seven. It talks about maintaining contact. So if we have the old situation where they start on the side and then pushed in the back, it, we have no block in the back. But if you get separated from you and you go back, so that's again just another situation where you kind of like just need to see the whole play. And then this one, this uh, number nine is really interesting because we're inside the tackle box. Uh, the defender beats um, defensive end A, um, B95, gets past tackle A75, and is about to tackle the quarterback, A12, who is still inside the tackle box, and that's the key. He's inside the tackle box. A75 pushes B95 in the back. So this is like the tackle gets beat by the end. He's about to, make his, he's about to get to the quarterback, and he gets shoved in the back. So once he gets past that defender, I mean the uh, tackle, and he's about to uh, make the tackle, he gets shoved in the back, this approved ruling actually tells us, hey, leave that one alone. Now that, that doesn't look good, but this is only inside the tackle box. So the ruling says, touchdown counts, no foul by A, um, A75. So um, again, it's kind of a, a philosophy of being inside the tackle box, we're gonna leave that, leave that one alone. Let's do some uh, play examples here. Let's play one. Thank you. This is a good play because there's actually three t um, potential blocks in the back. So look at that. Oh, can we can you go back to the beginning of that? And then just pause it. Okay, so I want you to watch this tackle here, and then watch the quarterback, and then at the end, watch the wide receiver. Okay, sir. Okay. So we have a flag at the end. Just, yeah, just let it run. Yes, sir. Right? So it looks like three blocks in the back, right? Potential, right? So do, see if they make any of the criteria. We have a call there. So there's our tackle, uh, 67. He comes back. Was that okay? Can you go back just a little bit? I want to see the A12 there. Okay. And then, okay. Uh, pause it. There we go. What was that force? In the side, yeah. So this end zone is a really a good angle for it. So if you don't have the right angle, go no call. Right. Don't make that call. Because that looks like it, a block in the back. Because look, you think when he lands, he's going to land on his face? Yeah, he's going to land on his face. Okay, roll it. And look right here. Okay, pause. You didn't even touch him, right? So what if you're the umpire and you see that? It looked like a block in the back. I mean, the kid falls down, at the, the uh, blocker's hands go out, right? He's just trying to like really protect himself from like falling on him. So he didn't touch him at all. It looked like, a, it looked like another block in the back. Okay, roll it. And there we go. We saw that third one, right? Did that look like a block in the back? That was almost the same as the tackle, right? So we had three, three potential blocks in the back and um, none of them were there. Okay. Can I look at the, can we look at the grading? Uh, the power, can we go back to the PowerPoint? I want to just do the grading. Okay. Let's see. okay. 
Yeah, I can zoom through. Ah. So here's the grading for that play. This is a better no call as the primary contact is more on the side of the defender. And this is for that last possible block in the back, right? The first two, nobody called anything. Those were uh, good no calls. And then right here is the uh, supervisor. He is in chase mode, so any material contact to the back would make this a foul. Agree with grader and understand why you would throw it, but need to learn to slow down and process this more. That's, that's a great phrase, right, that slow down. If you can slow, slower, slowest. I mean, our, our, our crew talks about that all the time. You know, hey, we need to slow down on penalty enforcements. We need to slow down on, on our communication. We need to slow down on seeing, seeing the play. Um, there's really not enough of a material effect here on this defender. And that's another good word, right? Material. Are we actually impacting the play? Okay, can we go to play two? So watch, uh, watch the center. Watch number 51. He's inside the tackle box right there. There we go. What do y'all think of that one? Now, if he got pushed and he made the tackle, what would we do? Yeah, leave that alone, right? He's not getting to a fumble, right? He's not trying to catch a pass. He's actually just, that's the full force behind him. Okay, can we go back to the PowerPoint, look at the grading on that? Okay, that's all right. I don't have that many. There we go. Um, I'm just going to read bullet two. Center A51 from a chase position blocks B91 in the back before the runner starts to be driven back. And then it talks about who should see this. Who would see this in a five-man crew? We're talking about five-man crew, so we ain't got no uh, center judge or anything, so... If it's in the backfield like that, maybe the R would see that, right? Because he's going to be going with the front side action. Um, if I'm on the wing and that happens right at me, did, did I even see the block? All I see was him like landing on his face, right? Now, if you're the weak side wing, there's a possibility you could see it. Now, in that play, it happens so far on the other side that there's a lot of traffic. It's possible. In our crew, what we try to have is if there's a, a wide run, we want the R to go with it. So we have the R, the, the, uh, the play side wing, and the umpire kind of triangulating that. We have the back judge cleaning up, and then the, whole, the weak side wing has everything behind it. Because we found even like with quick passes, we've had a, a quick pass go out before, and the ball was incomplete, or, and we just didn't know because it happened so fast. <laughs> and there was traffic for the, our other wing. So we want the R to actually go out there with that, as long as the quarterback's not threatened. And again, this is all just, just five man. And then these graders are kind of talking about, um, it says you should have a sense of this chase position. So the old thing, you know, as we do football more and more, we start to get a, like, a feel for it. So you see that guy with the, you know, the proverbial brick in his hand, watch out for him. And see that guy chasing, the, you know, he got beat. He's chasing the defender. He's just going, he just shoved him to the ground. Okay, I'm just going to do one more play. Yeah, do you have a? It did. No, it did not. Sorry. It did not. They didn't call it. But he, he's like, hey. Okay, so here's our uh, last play. We have a field goal attempt. 55-yarder. And we have... You know, as a crew, we have to be ready for this. There we go. Yeah, just let it roll on one more time. You can see the end zone shot. There we go. All right, we can stop it.
All right. On the return of the missed field goal at the B4 and a block in the back by number 22, chase mode, contact squarely in the back. Defender goes forward after contact. Um, back judge appears to be following the runner. Um, the head linesman, can you help? So, in, you know, for a five-man crew here, we're going to actually have two people under the uh, goal line, I mean, under the field goal, sorry. And then if, if it's to the H side, you know, we can actually help. But if it's to the L side, i got to run my butt over there and get, you know, kind of square off, right? So I'm not going to be able to help too much on that play, actually. Um, and this says, H, you need to move downfield farther when you see a return forming. Clearly, this is the supervisor here, clearly in a block in the back, but immediately blocking into making tackle, and thus no foul because not personal in nature. And I forgot to mention this part, so I'm glad they, they did that. We talk about if you get blocked into making a tackle, from the back, it's not a foul. But if it's personal in nature, maybe he puts his helmet in his back or whatever, let's go ahead and call those. You know, we always err on the side of safety. I'm going to skip this last play because it's actually a little, it has three potential block in the backs, and the grader said we probably should have called all of them. And so I, I, when I thought about it, I was like, I don't want to add any confusion to this. Um, that's pretty much it for the blocks in the back. Does anybody have any questions? Well, this is really something, you know, the more we see it, the better we get at it. And I think if we take those philosophies and apply them, it would, first of all, would make, I know it would make Marvell really happy that we uh, kind of quit calling them. Um, I think as a crew and I, uh, you know, we, uh, we, you know, we worked championship game. We were blessed enough to work that last year. And I think the only two calls we, we messed up were two blocks in the back, honestly. It was like, the, I, thought we, I thought we had a perfect game. And then we saw that film, we're like, dang it, there they are. They're not, they're not, and they looked like it, bigger than Dallas. But um, once we saw it on film, we're like, nope, neither one were. So I know that's why he's like, hey, Dre, why don't you teach it? Because <laughs> what's the best way to learn, right? You try to teach somebody. Um, this here is kind of like, I like to, I don't know, is Marcelo here? I don't know. He's a good advocate for this. Um, this Rule 11 officials, and actually uh, I'm going to give, give uh, Marvell a little credit too on this one. Um, they have a podcast, and these are two guys that are D2 officials, and um, they're in the uh, Northwest, and they, what they do is they, do, they did a weekly podcast in the whole offseason, so they got about 25 of them. So if you're ever in your car, I drive like an hour and a half a day, you know, to and from home, and you can listen to these podcasts, and they, go, they talk about everything from... Um, free kicks, batting, they'll talk about all the rules. They went through all the rule changes. And they're really, they're really smart guys. They're very descriptive. Um, so if you ever listen to podcasts, it's called Rule 11 Officials. It is a great resource. And these guys are super smart. And because they're doing it and they go to like all these camps, they actually have a ton of contacts. So they actually get a lot of interviews with like officials and assigners. So they'll talk to the, like the Pac-12 supervisor. They talk to like Big 12 back judges and like kind of find out their journey like how did you get here um, you know what what makes you better and this isn't just for people that want to be like college officials or want to move up within college this is any official I mean most of us are here because we want to like be better than we were yesterday right I mean it doesn't matter how long you've been doing football um, you can always learn more and the rules are always changing so if you don't adapt with the game you're just gonna be left behind and this right here is a, is a great resource. If you're an audio person and you can hear somebody and actually learn from that, this is a, a great resource. So um, I'm going to do Rule 11 officials. And then my last little, um, since I have the microphone again, uh, if, you do not, if, you're not, if you do not subscribe to the CFO website, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. Um, they have so much video that's available to Tasso officials, for $30, you can get access to all this like free training. And so you just go to cfo.arbitersports.com, and then there's a registration, and you click the Tasso button. $30 gets you complete access to all that. And so they have videos about every single thing, and they have like archives going back and forth. So if you're like a new, let's say you're a new referee, and you're like, you're like hey, guy, guess what? You get to use the microphone tonight. <laughs> And you're, and you're like, well, oh, crap, I don't want to go to House Park and sound like an idiot. Well, they actually have a training video that tells referees how to, how to do announcements. So they have all these little things that kind of teach people what they need to do. And then so everything, 
And then weekly, they actually talk about plays from um, this year in college. So they say, here's week one plays. Here's all the things that we can get better. Remember, every play we do isn't to embarrass you. It's to kind of teach you and, uh, and the things that we can do better. Because, hey, you know, the best thing about us, right? Tasso and Massachusetts, you know, we're brothers in arms on this. And college. So, we, you know, we get this wonderful resource right here. So those are my two stumps, Rule 11 officials and, um, and CFO. If you, um, I definitely highly recommend the, those two things. And I think that's, that's all I have. So I uh, thank you all and uh, continue having a great year. Marvelous. First of all, I want to thank Dre for putting on that great presentation. Uh, he put it on. He put it together himself. He did a great, a great job. Uh, hopefully, I seen one of their games, part of their one of their games, and they did not have not one illegal block in the back. I think they're probably scared to throw them now. But <laughs> <laughs> after so many times we talked, but I think it was a great tool for them. I really do. I mean, uh, if they could come to realization that what they really were seeing and be honest with yourself, I think when watching film, that's more important than anything. Uh, I have a couple of things to talk about. One, uh, there's a school out there. I'm not telling you because uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to bring it up or say something to you. That's going out there with knee pads that are pulled through like, you know, knee pads underneath their uniform. As long as it's covering the knee, it's legal. Only why I'm saying that, because I haven't, I've put out some words, some little birdies out to see if that's even legal. But right now, all it says is in the rule book is a knee pad. It didn't specify. I know a long time ago, I do believe Mike or Wayne or somebody, they did used to specify what the knee pad was. And if you have like a volleyball knee pad or uh, one of them pull-up knee pads, I don't see where it says you can't. As long as the pants is covering it, the pants still have to cover the knee pad. So that was one of the questions that came in from a coach. And I understand we sent a player off. I really, I don't blame them. It's just unusual. Yes. Right. That, but well, even if the pants are not, the pants I don't think makes a difference because the pants has, still have to cover the knee pad. I don't care how tall you are. If they're a sleeve knee pad, if it's a sleeve knee pad, it still have to cover the pad, the knee, the pants. Huh? All right. Hey, first of all, I'm sorry. I, you guys, excuse me. Really, I can't hear out one ear and barely hear out the other. I have an ear infection. So I, I really, I've been sick for the last two weeks. And uh, I would take my jacket off, but lost 11 pounds from it kind of chill, but if you could speak up really, Mike, I didn't really hear it, and maybe somebody can repeat it. I'm sorry, really. Yeah, what they're saying is, in the video, they're talking about if the pants weren't long enough, they would call the players. So they call the, the, the whole concept of using these pads was when they Well, I know I seen a guy six foot seven, 
this past weekend. His pants were long enough. Oh, okay, I understand. If that's what people are saying, good with that. But uh, we better look that one up. Yeah, you know, I'm just trying to protect yourself. And if they say in the knee, as long as they have knee pad, but I still say the rule state, it has to cover the, the pad itself. So if it does, is that what it's, does it still have to cover the pad, Mike? Part of the pad. Huh? As long as no skin is showing? Okay. Like I said, I, I, I'll be first one to tell you, <laughs> when, I, when the coach asked me that, I man, I went through the rule book, was, I didn't have to went back two or three years because I know. Uh, I'll find an email and I'll forward you the email so you can look at the Yeah, please do because I really. Huh? Okay. You want to come up here and read it? Yell it out. See, by rule, by rule, the pants still have to cover the pad. Right. So, but it like it's just saying touch there. Okay. So you guys got it, all right? So just as long as it's touching. All right. You got, you got somebody. You got something to save your bacon when it comes to getting sued. Oh yeah, Sorry. I have to be right there. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Oh no. What happened? What'd you do to my computer? I didn't do anything. The video was was just showing. All right. Also. Also, I guess. Uh, He put on that presentation for illegal blocks in the back. I'm, I'm going to show you some things, how I'm doing the grades different. I promise you, I'm going to grade two films a week. Uh, ooh, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to grade two films a week. I haven't got to any yet. Like I said, I was very ill. And I promise you, I'm going to do 20 by the end of the year. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the things I added to I added to huddle. <coughs> Are we up? I just put the little block in the backs, the ones I was going to show tonight, and show you what I added to yeah. your game film. If you go in, you notice what I'm going to try to do is put together a training tape of foul toads so you can have some idea to look at. So it's something you can gauge your files on. Right now, I just put illegal blocks in the back. If you go into your, into your games, you'll see where it says file code. IBB is illegal blocks in the back. Uh, next, it is the grade, correct, incorrect. I'll put a no grade remark here just because I want to see how we vote on this one. Uh, the calling official. And if I want to put it as a training tape, all these are training tapes, so one of them I take out as a training tape. And then also, we're going to talk about some of the reports, okay? Uh, we'll go through this real quick on this here. And if, like you see the arrow, it's coming up. Uh, let me start this over, because I don't think this is the first play. All right, this report had in there illegal block in the back by number five. All right, this is what the report has. I read the report three times just to make sure. It says it has illegal block in the back on number five. Here's number five here. You ain't touched nobody yet. <laughs> now, you send that report in to a coach, what do you think that coach thinks? I mean, your credibility gets a little shady there. And I'm not, hey, first of all, I'm putting this up not to embarrass anybody. I just want to make sure we're doing this as a group because this is not good. It's really not. All I did was took, uh, I went through all the games I could find 
831 with illegal blocks in the back. And if I get this, how am I supposed to grade this? Of course. Uh, some of them, I could, the games weren't in order. I called one guy and I figured it out. But this here, we have a flag down for a legal block in the back. I don't want them to see. All right. This is number five. We circled him. Now, when I do see that, maybe we put in the wrong file code. Mighty shim off as a whole or something. I see nothing on that play that supports anything. So if you put that in there and you put it as an illegal block in the back and I can't find anything else on there, I rest assured it will be on the training tape. I'm going to purposely put it on there. Not to embarrass you. Hopefully somebody else learned and not to want to make calls like this. Our credibility is not that good. Now here's another one here. I put a no great remark just because I didn't want to give nobody a clue here. Do you see this here? This is where he comes in at. First look, you might think block in the back. All right? Could be, could not be. So I don't think I put it marked it on this one. It's this block right here. Everybody see? This block right here. Now, if we move it along. And if he's rolling along the side, it's almost not going to have a block in the back. Now, here's the one thing I'm not sure if Trey said. If you're in chase mode, you get any part of his back. It's supportable. Any part of his back, if you're in chase mode, if I'm chasing somebody, okay, I, that you can be supported. But if we're running side by side and somebody hits you in the side, it's going to be very hard to support that. And like I say, here comes this one here. Now, we call this as a block in the back. I want to say from across the field, did we? No, the head linesman calls it. Now, how many people think it was a block in the back? Before we go any further, don't get me wrong, coaches are not sending these plays in. Some of them. They're not sending blocks in the back in. I just want us to get better at it. I want you to get better at it. Because I, I think we're missing a lot of them. And Dre was saying, well, it felt, he probably thought I was hammering on their crew a lot. But it wasn't just their crew. It was a chapter-wide thing here where we were calling a lot of illegal blocks in the back that are not quite there, in my opinion. And as you guys are seeing right now, you guys are agreeing with me, it seems like. And you can see this block right here. I see his whole number, 34. Now, how many of you, by a raise of hand, think that's a block in the back? You see what I mean? And don't get me wrong, you got players running up and down. It's not that easy. No, it's not. Somebody that's sitting at home, I guarantee you, they could tell you, oh, it sucks. I could tell, they could tell you, yeah, how did he miss that after seeing it? But guys, you got 22 guys running down speed and down the highway. It's tough. This, to call this game is not easy. It is not easy to call a football game. You can have five, seven, eight, six officials. You got 22 players running around on a 100-yard field, 50 yards wide. It's tough. I'm going to tell you on kickoffs, try to find one or two players one or two players and look at them too. Just one or two. If something happens with somebody else, so be it. But if, when you try to, to catch three or four people, it's just too hard. It is difficult. 
If you go three, it's your max. It should be your max. And when I mean that, well, you got a well, kickoff, because kickoff doesn't last really that long. You have a kickoff, and one guy who's watching is over there, you got maybe one or two more. Do not try to go past three. Yes, sir. Uh, I should go back to that. He's talking about the last play. In my opinion, I think he only saw the results of the block and not the whole block. And we can go back. Now, we're talking about the headlinesman up top. It's, in, it's supposed to be in this view. I can't see what the headlineman is looking at at the time this block is occurring. But if he is looking here, if he is looking here, which he probably is, he just misjudged it, like everybody else in this room has done. We have all done it. Nobody's ex excused from that. Nobody's immune to making a mistake, including myself. He just misjudged it. But as you can see, that was clearly a side block. the correct call. There's the two corporates. And you'll get a better view on this uh, on the type angle. Now how many people agree that's a block in the back? Yeah, everybody raising their hand now. That's the call we want to make, okay? That is the call we would want to see you make, all right? Yeah, and I guarantee you, you're going to get coaches. That was a block in the back. They probably all agreed on the field. That first one that we called, or the one prior to this, was a block in the back. They probably, oh, yeah, that's a block in the back. That's what they're used to seeing. I want us to get it, tighten it up a little bit and get better with it. You need to get better with it. Like I say, they're not, they not sending these plays in. I just want us to get better with it. Because if a coach does call in or send in that play, the prior one, I can show him, look here, coach, there's this is a block in, this, in the side. You see his whole number, 34. And I know some coaches say, well, he barely got a partial of his block in the back. We can't officiate and be consistent with partial blocks in the back. It's too hard. Okay, here. 
Oh yeah, I got a lot of games. <laughs> Here's another good block in the back. I think we got to watch the full view. I think this is the game that was out of order where we had. And I had to find it. I made the phone call and got it. Happens around the 32-yard line or the 30-yard line. This block right here. Chase mode. He's in chase mode and pushes the guy right past him. Don't we all wish they were all that easy? <laughs> Even John got that one. So. <laughs> all right, here's another one. What would have been here? Yeah, we had a mugging on this one, but I think we should have called, but we're talking about IBBs. I think this is a great call here by the referee and the head linesman. Oh, another thing. When you put your game, your report, put all the officials who made the call in there. A lot of the reports only have one official. And I go in there and there's two flags, three flags. Put it down in there. I want to give everybody credit who did it. Yes, sir. Okay. In presentation. Huh? Yeah, we're going to get into that. Okay. Because that was blocked right into the tie. Yeah, I'll, I'll get in. I'm going to get that when we get to the close one, okay? To the close view. I'm going to show you why. Okay. And Dre is exactly right. I agree with Dre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only when safety involved. Now, watch this tack, watch this block. What I mean blocked into, can you, can you stand up? If I get blocked into him, and you can just turn. If I get blocked into him and I make the tackle, that's fine. But look at where this guy ends up. He ends up on the ground. He cannot do anything to protect himself when he makes this tackle. I think this is the view here. He's going to the ground. He's not even able to make the tackle standing up. Yeah, I know. You see how this guy, he actually, you see how that, you see how he goes to the ground? Only reason he made the tackle, he got knocked into it, which we want somebody who gets knocked into him and be able to wrap him up or at least get him by his waist. This guy gets knocked to the ground and the runner actually probably tripped over him more than anything else. This is all Ralph fault why I can't hear, but go ahead. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, as a chapter, you can't call that a holding. Yeah. I got to play where you didn't call one, too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. Yeah, we're just talking about illegal blocks in the back. And I know the umpire here, he probably looked at it, and he probably wished he threw his flag. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. That's why I just went past it. Mr. Watts know better. Okay, here, we get lucky here. This play, this, I think the umpire gets lucky here. And you can tell me if he got lucky or not. Look at him following the runner. His eyes is on the runner. Do we all agree or not agree? Now this guy pushes this guy in the back here when he throws his flag. To me, personally, I don't think he's seen the home play. He got lucky. And you're going to say he was better lucky than good. I would have rather him, personally, not even throw his flag. 
I can't say, I wish somebody else had it. I'm glad we got it. But I think he got real lucky on that play. And you can say, well, the block came past the runner. Yeah, but I don't think he's seen the whole play. I, 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 if he tells me he did, fine. I just, I don't see any proof or evidence on film that he's seen that whole play. Well, we have an interception here, and we have a block in the back during the return. Was it here? Right in front of the, right here. Oh, shucks. I can't remove my mouse. No, I can't see no more. It, it was on the, op, the guy on the opposite side, and he got a correct call. No, and I see what I. I gave an IC for it. Oh, is this the one where he, where he came up? Oh, this is the block he called the illegal block and back on. Yeah. All right. This is what the blocker is presented. The blocker is presented his side here. And if you go up a little further, this blocker is presented face to face. And mind you, they're only two yards apart. A player can eat up two yards just like this. He is presented the front of this guy, the defender. He's still presented, and the defender turns. Okay, everybody understand why that's not correct, that's incorrect, all right? And then, then he comes from across the field to make this call. That didn't have any bearing on it, but do you see where the defender turned at that point? It, and I do believe Dre said something about that. If he turns and gives himself up, that's on him. Because I'm telling you, if he gets this, and it's two yards, it's almost impossible for him to, because he's running. He's not stationary. You can see him coming up field for this, to stop and say, okay, this guy's going to turn his back on me and hit. All right. Now we're talking about this block here. He has presented his front. Now this guy turns. Sixty-five. All right, here's another one to vote on. Now, like I say again, you send me a play, not send me a play. If you send in a foul report, and I'm looking for illegal blocks in the back, it's got to show me something. Our credibility as a chapter, again, they call this on number, I want to say number 30. Yes, number 30. I couldn't find a locator number 30 on the field for the defense, the receiving team. And you say, okay, how do you know it's not a number 30 out there? Well, let's bag it up a little bit, sorry. I count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine players. And then we got two receivers. That's 10, 10, and 11. And we call a block in the back. Now we could have called something else or whatever. This ball is dead at the 40. We know it's dead at the 40. So we'll go back at the B40. This ball is dead at the 40. Oh, yeah, sorry, let me bag it up. Now we look for number 30. I don't see no 30 out there, I see it. That's number 10. That's the number 20 here. Is that 30? That's 20. 
So, in all these, 55, 61, 54, no, no, number 30. And that's what we got in our report, number 30. Again, not trying to, I just want to make this better. Now, what kind of block in the back are we going to look for when nobody's going for a ball? It better be big. Mind you. Now, I didn't see the flag being thrown. They said it was thrown by an official. But everybody's running away from this. It had to be a pretty big block in the back. So we know it was the 40. So they said, I didn't see the flag. Where? Okay. Now, now look what they, the next play, the ball is snapped at the 30. So we know it was a flag there. Yeah, I just didn't see anything worth throwing a flag for. Let's make sure the fouls are there. Make sure the fouls are there. All right, here's another one. The head linesman throws this one. I give him a credit call. Wait a minute, headlines wouldn't throw nothing there. Oh, that might have been my mistake there. I don't even see a foul on it. Let's move on to this. Oh. I know what happened there. That, that was the last one. Sorry. That was the last one, last play there. Yeah, this is the last play. I don't know why it got in there. Oh, that was the last play. But like I say, when you do your file reports, you get your game report, you'll see my little notes in, the, in huddle, and you're also going to see this. This is because when I get through, I want to be able to go to a game and have, at the end of the year, some category of fouls for us to go back and look at and have, like, offensive of holding, DPI, and I'm going to try to put them in categories, grab and restrict, whatnot. I'm going to try to do my best to have at least... 10 to 20 plays on each category. I'm not going to have a, I'm not making up 1,900 plays. My, I just ain't doing that. But have a, a 10 to 20 plays of each category for us to go from. All right? Anybody got any questions? Yes, sir. X, no number to report. Just don't put a number in there because if you put a number that's not on the field and I send you a report, you're going to say, she, he's not even on the field. Well, yeah, that's, that's the line they use. But when the coach, Marm came out with a pile of grabs. But so that's the question. I just don't, you want to put an X there for not to throw the number? Yeah, or nothing there at all. Can't, if you can't leave it blank, just put zero if you have to put a number in there. If you can put, can you put X in there, Arnold, or zero? I've never tried it. Huh? I've never tried it. Yeah. You have to put an X or a number. Or X, put an X in there. That means you just don't have a number. Hey, but if you have a face mask, you better have a number. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Like I said, I promise, I'm going to have 20 games by the end of the year. We should have enough film at the end of the year to have some reference points. All right. Go ahead, Wayne. Uh, President. Yes, first time ever clapped for me. 
Oh, it's over?